Hello and welcome to the newly rebranded Trump Card Reviews, formerly called Thomas Paine, and today I'm going to be looking at some upcoming TV shows. Maybe put in the comments which ones you're looking forward to, or are going to watch yourselves, or maybe what you'd like me to review, because I just had a look at Perry Mason Season 1 and it didn't get much interest, so there's not much point in reviewing something that people don't care about. I'm going to be having a quick look at Mandalorian Season 3, Liaison, Perry Mason Season 2, True Lies Season 1, Shadow and Bone, The Power and Secret Invasion and I'll be also recommending some movies later on that I personally enjoyed. We have a bit of a glut of TV shows on the way. Coming out on March the 1st, we have The Mandalorian Season 3 and you probably have a good idea of if you like The Mandalorian or not by now. Apparently this season they're bringing in Babu Frick as a main character, ergo they're probably completely out of ideas. So make your best guess in the comments how many times in season 3 of The Mandalorian is Babu Frick going to say, hey hey, that'll be fun won't it? Something to look forward to. I have a very bad feeling about this. The Mandalorian is set in the Star Wars universe and is a sci-fi structurally more like a western. If we're lucky, season 3 will be okay. Up next, a show that has already started called Liaison, starring Eva Green. An Anglo-French production and an oddly stylish spy thriller centred around two Syrian computer hacker brothers being sought for their skills by multiple competing countries. I surprisingly found myself enjoying the first episode and want to watch more. It's not been very kindly rated by the newspaper critics, which could be a sign that the show gets worse as the series goes on, or it could be a sign that the show has the temerity to be good while not being sufficiently filled with the message. Perry Mason Season 2 starts on March the 6th, and despite Season 1's many good features, including some very fine acting, I find the story unsatisfying. In particular, a plot thread where Perry Mason did a PI job for an employer, asked for more money and was instead ruthlessly beaten and tortured. I was waiting for some sort of conclusion to that plot thread where Perry Mason got some kind of payback but that never came. He just got beaten and tortured and left it at that and the plot thread was left blowing in the wind. The show is also far too depressing, consistently dark and gloomy and kicked off with a deceased baby. I'm not holding out much hope for season 2. We also have True Lies being released on March the 1st, which is a TV series adaptation of the Schwarzenegger movie. It's perhaps the thing on the list that I'm most looking forward to. I was not in love with the original film. I always found it to be okay. I don't like that everything is getting remade and there seems to be a genuine dearth of original ideas in Hollywood, but the show is being written by Matt Nix, who wrote Burn Notice, so it actually stands a chance of being quite good. What does worry me is the cast. I don't think I know many of them from anything, and that could be a sign that the script is bad if the show is not attracting well-known actors. I'm also gravely concerned that the female lead is being played by Ginger Gonzaga from She-Hulk, who I found irritating in that show on an almost industrial level. I've seen the leading man Steve Howey, it turns out, in a few things. He was briefly in SEAL Team, and he was in the shockingly bad film adaptation of the video game DOA, a film made from a fighting game that's largest claim to fame was its accurate breast jiggle physics. And what is the best thing I can say about DOA? It captured the game well by being extremely silly and having lots of very hot women fighting in bikinis. DOA is, I would say, in the so bad it's good category, just nothing about the film works, not even the physics. People fly around like gravity is negotiable. DOA also gets extra points for the ladies 2 versus 2 bikini beach volleyball scene. It's like a gender swapped Top Gun. The film knows what it is and it frankly doesn't care. I went back and watched DOA again, purely for research you understand, and Steve Howey, who's going to be in True Lies playing the Schwarzenegger part, was playing the geek computer tech in it. I didn't even remember him big in the film and frankly barely even noticed him this time around. And frankly why would I when this film also has an exclusively hot girl in bikinis fight filmed in the rain, including the Australian actress and singer Holly Valance, who if you haven't seen her acting lately, I don't think she needs to now. She got married to a billionaire British property developer. 
DOA had a $30 million budget, and taking inflation into account, that means that DOA had a comparable budget to aliens. I'll just let that sink in, because the result that they got for the money fell somewhat short of aliens quality-wise. So there's an idea. You could take a chance on one of these new TV shows, or you could just watch Aliens instead. It's a magnificent film, almost perfect. So halfway through the list, and the biggest recommendation so far, has been to watch DOA, a bad movie from 2006, that unlike the current fare, was made before Hollywood went completely insane. Or you could just watch Aliens. It's brilliant. What else have we got? Well, Shadow and Bone Season 2 is coming out on March the 16th. I think I made it maybe one or two episodes into Season 1 and found that I just couldn't get into it. It seems more pitched at the YA market. But it has got Ben Barnes in it, and I quite like him from playing Billy Russo in The Punisher. So, Shadow and Bone Season 2. I think I'm just going to rewatch The Punisher for a fourth time instead. Coming up this month, we also have a series called The Power. It's based on a book written by a feminist British author, set in a version of our world where one day, all teenage girls suddenly develop the ability to electrocute people at will, and soon it spreads to nearly every woman on the planet. Gender dynamics are disrupted, and nothing will ever be the same again, and that sounds like one of the worst concepts for a show that I've ever heard. It sounds like it's going to be a profound expression of one woman's feelings of powerlessness, combined with a feminist's fevered fantasy and wet dream rolled into one. I'm expecting Misandry the TV show, CBT the TV show, and I don't think I could be any less interested. I'm just going to say it, I'm not convinced that overly hormonal teenagers being able to electrocute people at will would result in a very stable society. Coming soon, we also have Secret Invasion. On Marvel's current form, I don't hold out much hope. I'm not even sure that Samuel L. Jackson can save Marvel at this point, but I may give it a chance just for him. The show also has Kobe Smulders, Amelia Clark, and Christopher McDonald in it, so the cast could save it, maybe, but I'm very worried that the creator Kyle Bradstreet does not have a huge amount of writing experience, with only five projects prior to this. Or be it, among those five, was writing for Borgia, Copper, and Mr. Robot. In conclusion, there are lots of new TV shows coming out, but I cannot honestly say my enthusiasm is high for any of them. Maybe watch Aliens instead, or you could even try DOA. It's terrible, but watching it again cheered me up no end. What else could I recommend? Well, recently I've watched two films from the South Korean director Jae Hoon Choi, one called The Swordsman, and another called The Killer, a girl who deserves to die, and I enjoyed both of them quite a lot. Now, lately I've been watching a lot of Disney Marvel and American shows in general and thinking, why am I not enjoying this? Is it me? And then I watch some Korean films and TV and have an absolute blast. So no, Hollywood, it's not me, it's you. And I'm strongly considering just not watching anything from Hollywood or the BBC any longer. Watching their content has for a while been feeling like being in a struggle session with people trying to get me to join a cult. Or a mandatory lecture on sensitivity training from a university human resources department that everyone struggles to stay awake for. As a wise man once said, Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, can't get fooled again. Fool me once, shame on me. Shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. If Hollywood serves up this rubbish and I watch it once, that's on Hollywood. But if I keep on watching it, that's on me. But on the flip side, it is a very rich source of material for mockery. It still makes me laugh thinking about the Rings of Power and how Galadriel just walked by and left that guy to burn to death, or how the Numenorians managed to fit hundreds of horses onto those tiny ships. I only started YouTubing because of how bad She-Hulk and the Rings of Power were, and I can barely wait for season two.
those look good. A big salty clam would sure go great with this heat. 